of gaps. If we apply a force in the plane of the wall, it can actually help to lock the bricks together. This locking force is a combination of the weight and roughness of the bricks. The roughness can be thought of as friction. But if we apply a sideways force to the joints, and if this is greater than the friction, then the bricks will slide and the wall will be damaged. The same thing can happen with the walls of an opening. Let's look at the case where structures in the rock are rough, have no gaps and are spaced far apart. When the force is in the plane of the structures, the rock will lock together. With a sideways force, the result may be different. For example, if there is less friction on the structures because they're smooth and slippery, the force can push rock into the excavation after mining has taken place. So, when you read the ground, you must check for any signs of groundwater, gaps, and slippery structures. We've looked at structures in the walls, but what about structures in the backs or roof of an excavation? It's easier for rocks in the backs to fall under their own weight. If we think of our brick wall example again, we can create an opening by removing some bricks. No bricks can fall until we expose a whole brick. As we increase the width of the opening, we expose more joints and bricks can fall. So what prevents rocks from falling from the backs of underground openings? As we saw earlier, there may not be enough structures present to form blocks. But even where blocks are formed, the position and direction of the structures may still result in the blocks being locked in place. There may be enough forces to hold or clamp all the structures in the backs together. But remember that these forces will change over time. And if these clamping forces decrease, the rockfall hazard will be greater. We've spoken a lot about forces that can stabilise an excavation by clamping blocks together or that can cause structures to slide and rocks to move or fall. Now we need to find out 